Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for those who inspire us by their example. Grant us the grace to follow in their footsteps, planting seeds of hope and trust in your kingdom. May our lives be a testimony to the abundant blessings of your grace. Amen. Be seated. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to this time, this place, and this space of worship. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it is uh, the day where we wear green and we celebrate St. Patrick's. And it is the day where we've come together. We've made the choice. You each made the choice to follow the calling of the Spirit this morning. To follow God's uh, direction for you in your life. And you've made the choice to come here. To be here together. To be in community. This is our time and our place and our space of worship. We are welcome here. We belong here. And as we gather to share in this time of worship, let us pause to remember that we worship on lands that are by law, the unceded lands of Mingamaki, the ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people. May we live in respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. Our announcements. We've got all kinds of announcements going on. Uh, today we had confirmation class and we had choir practice and now we have worship. Uh, this afternoon at 2.30 we have a service at the Riverview Adult Residential uh, Center. Uh, if you would like to come and join us for this worship service, it is wonderful and enlivening. It's going to happen at 2.30 and we come into the, the big building, the main building, through the main front doors. And we're just in the room sort of directly ahead as you go into that building. Uh, yes, you're more than welcome to join us and worship with the residents there. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we have the Quilters from the Power. On um, Wednesday evening, we have choir, junior choir practice happening at 6 o'clock. And again, everybody is welcome to join the junior choir. Uh, any youth ages 18 and under are welcome. And uh, 6.30 on Wednesday night, it's not in the bulletin, but mark it on your calendar, 6.30 is the fundraising committee meeting. On Thursday, we have our youth group meeting. Our youth group is meeting uh, for the first time this week, and we are encouraging all the youth ages 12 and up out to come and attend. Uh, regardless if you're affiliated with this church or not, so if you have friends and you want to invite, invite them. They are more than welcome. Uh, the group is going to be meeting every Thursday from 3.30 to 5, and our newly renovated space upstairs, which is so fun, I was just up there a few minutes ago, it's a good spot. Uh, spread the word, it would be great to have a crowd. And then our confirmation class is meeting on Thursday evening for our special meeting that we have where we go and uh, we meet with and tour uh, the funeral home. We go down to Eagles. So we're meeting together at 6.30 here at St. Paul and then we'll travel down together for 7 o'clock. So uh, mark that on your calendar confirmation class. Um, March 28th, we have our Gape Supper. We're excited to host a potluck at Gape Meal and invite you to bring your favorite dishes to share with the community. It's going to be at 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to invite folks to come set up at 5 
If you, uh, if you sign up to set up, please be there at 5. The meal is going to be at 6. And then we're also asking folks if they can sign up to stay after and clean up. Uh, the other thing we're asking is uh, just to keep things a little simple this year and hassle-free, hopefully. Uh, if you bring a dish uh, to share, take it back home with you at the end. Uh, it's wonderful to, uh, to share our meals, but it's much easier on uh, the folks that are staying behind to clean up if you take your dish and your leftovers with you. That would be great. Thank you very much. Um, it'll make it fun for everyone. And so, yes, looking forward to our agape meal, which just means it's, it's agape means love. So it's a love fest. So we're just going to come together and share community and just love each other. It's going to be fun. Bowling on April 6th is our bowling tournament. I'm so excited for having our second annual bowling tournament. Uh, April 6th from 2 to 4. Uh, the amount is there. You can either pay now, so you can pay Nina and uh, or Wendy if you'd like, or you can pay when you get to the bowling tournament that day. But the sign-up sheet for the bowling tournament is in the narthex. And also for the cleanup and setup for the agape meal, that's also in the narthex. So porch. Back there. Okay, what else is happening? There's a property committee meeting coming up. And I want to point out that there's a pie sale coming up. Uh, our next pie sale will take place on Saturday, April 13th. Pies are, you can buy, pre-purchase pre your pies. Um, the sign-up sheet is in the narthex, uh, five, a uh, limit of five pies per family. And we're also looking for folks to sign up to help. So lots of things to sign up for in the narthex. Bring your pen and just go through all the pages. Uh, <laughs> What else do I want to remind you of? Karma Closet. The Karma Closet support is amazing. Uh, the baskets are getting really full. I think we're going to have to empty them for next week so that we can fill them up again. Thank you so much to everybody who has brought uh, in items for Karma Closet. That's fantastic. Um, if you forget uh, the things that they're looking for, you can just ask me. It is in the, in the past bulletins. Uh, you can also look on uh, the Facebook page and look at the past bulletin. You'll see it there. Easter Flower Memorial Arrangements again are happening this year. If you would like to uh, place a memorial arrangement, please contact Kathleen or Debbie uh, before March 26th. And thank you to everybody for the support of that project. I think I got through everything there. Um, a donation has been made to the general fund in love and memory of Karen Stephen and Isabel Wright and Raymond and Ronnie Wright by Margaret Rushton. I have other announcements here. Oops, so many pieces of paper. Um, we have exciting news. Um, Owen, hi Owen, hi Owen. Owen is going to Karate Nationals in Quebec. Isn't that amazing? Congratulations, Owen. He is the only dude from Victor County that is going to the Nationals in Quebec. So it's very exciting. Um, he is doing some fundraising to go to that trip, and so they're selling tickets on a weekend and uh, all kinds of good stuff uh, at Oak Island Resort. And I was saying maybe we can solve the whole treasure yeah. thing as we go to Oak Island. But anyway, if you'd like to get tickets from Owen, you can contact him. He's right there. <laughs> or his family. Yeah. Uh, that was on my list of things. Um, oh, this. I'm going to read what the Facebook post said, and I'll show you the picture. During the major snowstorm we experienced last month in our county and beyond, a call went out to any contractors who may be able to assist our town crew with the snow clear. This post came from the town of Westville. One contractor, Jack Russell, answered the call. Subsequent to that event, Mr. Russell watched our council committee of the whole when a presentation was made by Janice Gathro and Pamela Canning on behalf of the Food for Focus group from St. Paul United Church. Mr. Russell was so moved by the presentation and the good work being done by this group, he decided to donate the amount owing to him for his work for all the clearing he did during the snowstorm, an amount of $3,750 to our Food for Focus program. This is when the presentation was made this week. This 
donation, um, along with the grants that this group has been applying for and the many donations that have been coming from other churches, other individuals throughout our community, people are hearing about this program and they're very excited about it. And because of all that excitement and because of the de dedication of our, do our volunteers and because of the extreme need, they're projecting that they're going to double their numbers starting next fall. So that's amazing. Congratulations. And a big thank you to Pamela and Janice for all of their pioneering and, uh, and all of their work that they've been doing with this. It's awesome. Okay. I have some unfortunate news to share with our community. Um, Karen McLean has passed away. This is Dorothy Lane's sister. And we are, we are holding their family and our thoughts and in our prayers. Her visitation will be this week, Tuesday, March 19th, from 6 to 8 at Eagles Funeral Home in Westville. And her funeral service will be held Wednesday through St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. Um, the funeral, the obituary is up if you want to check those times and those dates. And then, like I said, we do hold their family and our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers. Before I get to um, birthdays, is there anything else coming from the community at this time? We do have some birthdays to celebrate today. Um, viewing us from the other side of the world, coming up this week will be Daryl's birthday. Happy birthday, Daryl, coming up this week. And then right here in our presence, coming up this week, will be Doris Pellerine. Hi, Doris. Hi. Happy birthday. You're welcome. Do we have any other birthdays to celebrate? My brother Murray tomorrow. Your brother Murray tomorrow is over here? Yeah. <laughs> Also, I know of others that are coming up this week. Elizabeth Bailey's is coming up this week. Um, Sid and Sharon are also having a celebrated birthday this week. We have lots. Of, it's March, right? It's a busy, busy time. My niece's birthday is today. Happy birthday, Jesse. Um, so uh, we'll sing for, uh, we'll sing happy birthday to Doris because she's here with us in the building. Happy birthday. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather in gratitude for your abundant blessings, we are reminded of the call to discipleship, to dare greatly and to trust in your transformative power. Open our hearts to receive your word today and empower us to embody the spirit of thanksgiving in all we do. Amen. Our mission and service uh, story for today uh, comes from Ukraine. Signing up for a course is both exciting and nerve-wracking, and we think about we think about what skills we'll learn, how quickly we'll see improvement, and how naturally talented we may already be. In Sanvir, Ukraine, English teacher Alona is encouraging her leaders to challenge that way of thinking and enjoy the aspect of social time with one another while learning English. This class supported by Mission and Service Partner ACT Alliance, is part of a psychosocial support program for Ukrainians displaced by war. Alona and her family were also displaced by the conflict in Ukraine, and she is now actively contributing to the well-being of others in similar situations. 
While online learning expands opportunities and access to learning, distance learners miss crucial social engagement and human interaction. Alona shares, when we come together and get to know each other, we have a community. We can open up and share our thoughts, feelings, and experiences. In a low-pressure learning environment, students can feel comfortable as they learn skills and learn about each other. Thank you for supporting your support you show through mission and service as our neighbors endure the ongoing impact of war and conflict. Our offering has been received, our offering has been brought together in the many different ways in which we continue to support and sustain the important ministries that we offer here from St. Paul United. And for that, we are thankful. Let us now join together in the presentation of our offering. <laughs>
grow. And he's saying that we can share our growth with others. So I have a little song for you guys. Do you guys know I'm a little teapot? You know I'm a little teapot? Do you want to stand up and sing I'm a little teapot with me? Yeah, let's sing I'm a little teapot. Okay. Do you remember how it goes? we got to go with actions with it. Oh, gosh. How am I going to do the actions? I'll do my best. So, it goes ready. Everybody? I'm a little teapot. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your scriptures and for your words of wisdom. Help they help them plant a seed of knowledge and love and growth in us so that we may grow in our spiritual journey every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we are reading from the Gospel of John today. And where we are in this story is, it's kind of backwards, and this is something we do in Lent. So next week's story, Palm Sunday, has just happened. And now, we're, um, we're moving into the city, I guess we're in the city now, and then we're moving toward the cross. So what's, where we are in the story is, Palm Sunday's already happened. Next week, we're backwards, I know. But 
this is what happened after that story. After Jesus has this triumphant entry into the city, he comes on the donkey and everybody gathers around and they're saying Hosanna and it's a big, big ruckus and everybody's very excited. After that happens, they're in the city and there's some people, some people from very far away. They're, they're from Greece, they're Greeks. And they've seen this whole kerfuffle and they've heard about this guy named Jesus. And they go, we wanna know him. We wanna meet him. We wanna learn more about this. So, uh, so this is what's happening in the story. And guess what, you're gonna hear something about seeds and plants and all that too, so, because I did a foreshadowing. So uh, let's listen to the scripture. John 12, verses 20 through 24. Among the crowds traveling to Jerusalem were Greeks seeking to follow God and worship at the great feast. Some of them came to Philip with an important request. They said, Philip, sir, we are hoping to meet Jesus. Philip, a disciple from the Galilee village of Bethsaida, told Andrew that these Greeks wanted to see Jesus. Together, Andrew and Philip approached Jesus to inform them about the request. And Jesus said to Philip and Andrew, the time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat is planted in the ground and dies, it remains a solitary seed. But when it is planted, it produces a great harvest. This is our gospel according to John. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is Open My Eyes. Truly acceptable in your sight, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. 
So we hear that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it will just remain a seed. But once it is planted, it grows and produces uh, life-giving crops. So what's happening here in our story today is Jesus has come into the city and he's caused quite a stir. And everybody is talking about, who is this guy Jesus? People who didn't know Jesus are all very excited to find out more because when he came into the city, he came in like a king. And they were like, who is this person who's saying they're our new leader? They want to know more. And there's some people from far, far away who have come to the city who are already about uh, curious about Yahweh, curious about God, curious about this message um, that was being given to the people through God. And then when they heard about Jesus, they were like, what is this? We need to know more. We need to meet this person. We need to find out more about this. We've been outside of this community hearing about what's happening, and we were a little curious. And then this whole big celebration has really piqued our curiosity, and now we need to know more. And when they get to Jesus, uh, when they get, uh, actually when Philip goes to Jesus and says that there are people, there are people from far away who want to meet you, Jesus goes, okay. Well, that's it, isn't it? Our ministry has reached this point. It's been fulfilled. We've gone beyond our borders. Things are happening. This is awesome. And then he says, this is what happens when we plant seeds. We plant seeds of faith. We plant seeds of knowledge. We plant seeds of the Spirit. And they grow. And we need to plant them in order for them to grow. They won't grow without planting. And this is John, the Gospel of John's version of the parable of the sower. There's this parable of the sower that's in all the other Gospels. And it is a sower went out to sow. And the sower is planting seeds. And some of the seeds fall on good soil and they grow immediately. Others fall on rocky soil where they encounter problems. Others fall on the path and that encounters problems too. But the ones that do grow, grow and produce a hundredfold, two hundredfold, they produce all of these more seeds that then go and be planted. And this was a very important theme at that time, this idea of seeds and planting, because they were living in an agricultural community. Most of the people there had planted a seed before. Have you planted a seed before? Uh, there you go. It's interactive today. There you um, go. I know. What? Questions. Uh, so, yeah, this time of year, actually, is a very nostalgic time of year for me. It's a very important time of year for me. When I was a very little girl, my dad owned greenhouses. And he had several big greenhouses. And when I was a little girl, I can remember walking through the greenhouses. And the, the smell, and it's this time of year, greenhouses are full of life. And they're such an exciting place to be in March. If you get a chance to go into a greenhouse in March, do it. Because seeds are sprouting. And the smell of the earth and the growth, it's just phenomenal. I loved it so much. And I told this story one spring to Sean, and he's a great guy, so he built me a greenhouse. So the next year I had a greenhouse, and I was in my own greenhouse planting seeds and and watching them grow and smelling the earth. So every year in March, I have this, this calling that, that beckons me and says, you have to get into a greenhouse. And I do, I find a way. I do go to greenhouses just so I can live that again because it's a beautiful, wonderful, wondrous time. This idea of planting this little tiny seed and then it grows into a beautiful plant. It's spectacular. And so all of these people would have heard this story, this idea of you need to plant the seed. If you don't do it, it won't grow. And they would have understood it. The regional meeting of uh, Bermuda, Nova Scotia is happening in May. And um, 
I'm on the planning committee. Uh, what happened was I went to the last meeting and I had some complaints and I realized I can't complain unless I'm willing to do some work and so then I ended up on the planning committee. So here I am and I'm the one planning the worship. And uh, the scripture that, well, the theme of the regional meeting in May is rooted in faith, growing in leadership. And the scripture that we're using is the parable of the sower. And part of planning for that worship um, was I uh, sent an email out to all of the worship leaders in all of Bermuda, Nova Scotia, and I asked them to share with me stories, stories from their own faith community of this idea of us being planted in faith and growing in leadership. This idea of the seeds that we're planting and how we are, as a community growing, as a church we're growing, and uh, so, yeah, so I sent out all those emails and I got a whole bunch of stories back. And I made them into a little booklet that I'm gonna give out at the regional meeting. But you guys have the best coffee because you know somebody. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I, I got all these great stories back from all over our, our province and our region, um, from the highlands of Cape Breton to Yarmouth, about this idea of discipleship and growth and us learning and nurturing in our faith. And I wanted to share one of the stories with you because um, it sounds like us. <laughs> and they're really close. It's actually St. James United and Anna Ganesh. And when I heard their story, I thought there are places in this story that I could impose our story. There are places in this story where it feels very familiar. And the other reason why it was a really good choice to share with you today is that uh, Reverend Smith opens with the gospel reading that I read to you a few minutes ago from the Gospel of John. And when the Holy Spirit makes all things line up like that for me, I go, okay, well, I just follow along, really. Um, so this is the story from uh, Reverend Smith uh, called Rooted in Faith, Growing in Grace. And it's about St. James United Church in Antigonish. And like I said, he begins with Jesus saying, Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth, it remains just a single grain. But if it does, it, but if it is planted, it bears much fruit. Reverend Smith writes, St. James United Church in Antigonish is undergoing a time of renewal. Following things returning to normal after the pandemic, the congregation took some time to prayerfully and carefully discern how God was calling us to this new normal. That discernment led to beloved parts of our life being restarted with enthusiasm. Some activities and groups carefully let go, and new initiatives beginning. St. James was always a busy and active church, but by taking time to seek the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit, we are experiencing a new era in our life together. Our Sunday worship now includes an online congregation which reaches shut-ins and those living at a distance, including out of the country, which still amazes us. Our music ministry of numerous choirs has expanded to include a guitar group and a children's choir, the Hot Meal Program, which feeds bodies and souls twice a week, now involves even more volunteers from the congregation and from the community. Growing from the tradition behind us, we are celebrating the work and witness which is ours in this time, while remaining open to the new things God will call us to in the world. We are in a time of growth and renewal. I hope you can feel it. I hope you can see it when you look around. The Spirit is, is guiding us and speaking loudly in this community. We are, we are sharing this good news beyond these walls. And people are listening and hearing and tuning in, right? People are hearing about the good things the love and the grace and the community building that is happening, and they're tuning in and going, I want to know more about that. I'd like to hear more about this, Jesus. I'd like to hear more about this love and grace and fellowship. Amazing things are happening. Seeds are being planted, and we're growing. 
and we're making a difference. And, and in other ways too, look, I, I was, I'm excited about this beyond belief because, um, so in our, in our annual report, our annual report, speaking of growing, this is phenomenal, um, uh, just on a page that we didn't point out, uh, we had the annual meeting, after the annual meeting was over, we were like, hey, maybe we should point out that page, and we're like, oh, we'll just see what happens. So what happened was, you read it. You saw this page in the annual report, and you read it, and I know you read it, because things are happening. This page is called Step Up for St. Paul, and it showed all of the different steps uh, of givings that we have, and then it called on us. This came from the Stewardship Committee, and they called us, and they said, we are all stewards of God's blessing here at St. Paul United, and each step on our giving chart represents our commitment to supporting our church's ministry and mission. And as we look to 24, let's consider stepping forward in our giving journey, whether it's moving up a level or simply staying in our current step. Your generosity is the heartbeat of our community, fueling the impactful work that we do together. Let's prayerfully consider how we can each contribute, expressing gratitude to God and investing in spreading love and grace throughout our community. Together, let's stand up and make a difference. Guess what? You did. People have been increasing their givings. People have stepped up. They've made a change. Thank you for reading this page that we never mentioned and hearing the call to, from God and from the Holy Spirit of how to dedicate your time, your talent, and your resources. How to improve and celebrate the ministry we have here. And one that I'm just very excited about is this last one. It was a challenge uh, that we had 42 households that were enrolled in PAR. And we asked for people to prayerfully consider um, joining PAR this year, which is the pre-authorized. And guess what? They did! <laughs> Car givers have increased, and not only have they increased in numbers of people, of uh, members of this church on par, but also their contributions have increased. It's phenomenal, and I am so thankful. We haven't made halfway yet. If you do the math, we have 94 um, total givers, and if that half of that would be 47 right now, oh, well, we were at 42, right now we're at 44. So it's a goal we can easily reach. If you continue to answer the call, if you prayerfully discern where God is calling you to give of your time and your talent and your treasure, this, this is an exciting time. We are making a difference. And, and I am so thankful. I am so thankful. I'm so thankful for your answer to these calls, and I'm so thankful for the ministry and the mission that is going out beyond these walls. People are hearing it. And it's making a difference. We saw this past week. People are generously donating to the ministry that is happening here. To the ministry that is changing lives. Because I can show you the other side of this equation. I can tell you about the families that receive food from Food for Focus. And that receive food from our, our monthly luncheon. That receive not just that, but the knowledge that they are important. That they are loved that they are cared for, that is the most important thing, right? To know that somebody in the world, some group of strangers, has decided that they are important enough to go out of our way to, to, to make sure that they are finding a, a more secure food environment. I am so thankful for this church community. I'm so grateful for all of the, the wonderful good news that you're sharing because it's, it's echoing back. It's rippling out and it's echoing back and I can hear it and I see it in our community. It's making a huge difference and a huge impact. And that is phenomenal. The seeds have been planted and they are growing. And we continue to plant more seeds. We continue to grow in our own faith. We are making this difference. And I, I'm just, I can't thank you enough. It fills my heart with so much joy. Apparently that's a sentence I say a lot, but that's because I get filled with joy so much. 
As we come to the end of this Lenten journey where we've been exploring all of these ways in which we use our time and our talent and our treasures in our community, all these ways in which we have answered the call to discipleship, and you have answered the call to discipleship. I tell you this all the time. I'm so impressed. You decided, you chose, you listened to the call, and you gathered here today. You, you got up from wherever you found yourself this morning, you got yourself together, you brushed your teeth, you had some breakfast, you got out the door, and you came here. You came here. You joined us online, you took time out of your day, and decided to sit down and spend time in this community to learn more about Jesus. And to learn more about how we together have this amazing growth that is happening where we are changing the world. It's phenomenal. It's a blessing. And I just thank you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we gather in your presence today. We are filled with gratitude for the countless blessings you've bestowed upon us. With thankful hearts, let us lift our prayers to you for the needs of our world and the mission of your church. For all those who have answered your call to discipleship and have dared to go beyond themselves to serve others, we give thanks. May their acts of generosity and selflessness inspire us to follow in the footsteps of planting seeds and hope and love wherever we go. For those who are struggling to find meaning and purpose in their lives, may they encounter your grace and experience the transforming power of your love. Help us to be instruments of your peace and agents of your healing in a world that is longing for your presence. For the leaders and members of our congregation, may we continue to grow in faith and discipleship deepening our commitment to living out the gospel message in our daily lives. Strengthen us to be faithful stewards of the gifts that you have given us, using them to further your kingdom and bring glory to your name. For the mission and ministry of our church, both locally and globally, may we continue to be a beacon of hope and light, sharing your love with all people and working tirelessly for justice, equality, and reconciliation in our communities and beyond. For those who are suffering and in need, may they find comfort, healing, and support in your loving embrace and the compassionate care of your people. Give us the wisdom and courage to reach out to those who are hurting, offering them hope and assurance of your presence. God of compassion and caring, we pray soundly for those that we hold in our hearts this day. Source of all night, we praise you for the wisdom of your word and the hope of your promises. With all your saints on earth and in heaven, we commit ourselves to the dominion of your new age. And we pray together as we are taught, saying, Divine Creator, our Holy Parent, our Mother, and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So our closing hymn is Beneath the Cross with you.
Morgan, a moonbeam to charm you, a sheltering angel, so nothing can harm you. Laughter to cheer you, faithful friends near you, and whenever you pray, heaven can hear you. Let us go to the world planting seeds of faith and the good news of God's creation with the love of God, peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. 